Implicit differentiation problems can be tough. If you're like me when I was learning calculus, they're probably one of the most common problems that get you stuck on your homework. So in this video, I wanted to show you the easy way to find dy dx by implicit differentiation. Trust me, it's not as hard as it, as it seems. If you got this one trick down, it's gonna make your life a lot easier. And I wanna do something special today too. So what we're gonna do is if this video gets 10 likes within a week, I'm gonna come out with an extra bonus video for you next week. I'm up for suggestions on what it should be about. Just drop it in the comments below. Be sure to hit that like button. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. So here's the problem we're going to be going over today. We're going to find dy dx by implicit differentiation given this equation here. 2 times the square root of x plus the square root of y equals 3. So like I've been doing with my other recent implicit differentiation problems, the first thing you want to do, and this is a really, really helpful trick to keep in mind when you're doing these implicit differentiation problems, is to first look at your equation and look at your problem and decide which letter is your variable and which letter is your function. In this case, based on the fact that it's telling us to find dy dx, this right here actually tells us exactly which one is which because whenever you have d something over d something like this dy over dx whatever's on top is always going to be treated as your function and whatever's on bottom in this case x is always going to be treated as your variable so the reason why this is important is because it's telling us right off the bat what we need to do is take the derivative of both sides of this equation with respect to x so x is going to be our variable y is going to be our function and why that's important is because it tells us exactly how we're going to treat x in this equation and how we're going to treat y in this equation, which is going to be a little bit different. So you always want to keep in mind that when you take the derivative of your function with respect to your variable, so when we take the derivative of y with respect to x, that derivative is not just going to be like taking the derivative of a variable because y is some unknown function of x. So since we don't know the function, we can't really know its derivative. So therefore, when we take the derivative of y with respect to x, the best we can do is to say dy dx. So this is the derivative of y. And if we take the derivative of our variable with respect to our variable, so take the derivative of x with respect to x, that is gonna behave the way that you would expect a derivative to behave. The derivative of x is just one. So it really does help, I think, to kind of write out everything we have over here before you actually start doing this problem so that you know how you're gonna treat X and how you're gonna treat Y. So having already figured this out, we can go ahead and, and start figuring out how to take the derivative of both sides of this equation. So typically when you have square roots like this or any root in general, if you're trying to take the derivative, it's gonna be easiest to first convert those roots into powers. So instead of taking the derivative of two times the square root of X, what we can instead do is take the derivative of two times x to the one half power because raising something to the one half power is exactly the same as taking the square root of it. They, they basically are just two different ways to write the same thing. Similarly, instead of saying the square root of y over here, we want to say y to the one half power and then we're going to say that's still equal to three. So the reason why this is better is because now to take the derivative of these things, we can use the power rule to do that instead of having to figure out how to deal with a square root. So now as we go through and take the derivative of each of these pieces, we again want to keep this stuff in mind over here. So the derivative of just your variable, when we're looking at taking the derivative of two times x to the one half, this only has our variable in it. It only has the thing that we're taking the derivative with respect to. So what that means is, the derivative is going to behave the way you're used to finding derivatives. We can just use the power rule to find this. So the power rule says that we'll bring the power down in front. So we'll get two times one half, which is just one. And then we'll keep our X here and then we'll, we'll lower our power by one. So we'll get one half minus one as our new power. So to simplify this a bit, we will get two times one half, which is one times X to the one half minus one. If you want to just kind of make a side problem out of that, one half minus one is the same as one half minus two halves, which is the same as negative one half. So this new power is going to be negative one half. And then to take the derivative of this term here, y to the one half with respect to x, remember x is our variable, we're always taking the derivative with respect to x throughout this we're actually gonna to have to use the chain rule for this because like we said over here, the derivative of y is not just one, it's dy dx. 
So therefore, we have to treat this as having an inner function. Our inner function is y, since y is a function. And then our outer function is this one half piece. So the chain rule says that if we want to take the derivative of some function plugged into another function, in this case, y plugged into the function that raises it to the one half power, we need to do the derivative of the outside function, leave the inside function alone, and then multiply that by the derivative of the inside function. So if we're doing the derivative of just this outside piece, which is the one half power, it's gonna look a lot like what we did over here. We're gonna bring the one half down in front. We're gonna leave our inside function the same by chain rule. And then we're gonna lower our power by one. So one half minus one, again, is just negative one half. And then by chain rule, we then multiply this by the derivative of our inside function. Well, the derivative of y, we figured out already over here, is dy dx. So we're gonna multiply this by dy dx. And then we have to remember to take the derivative of the right side of our equation as well. A constant, the derivative of a constant is always gonna be zero. So now that we have taken the derivative of both sides of our equation, we can actually go about solving for dy dx. Since we only have a single dy dx in this equation, it shouldn't be too hard. We should be able to just kind of use, you know, basic arithmetic, subtracting, adding, dividing, multiplying to get everything over to the other side of the equation. So first what we'll do is we'll subtract over this x to the negative one half to the other side of the equation. So that'll cancel here and we'll just get one half y to the negative one half times dy dx equals negative x to the negative one half. And then to get our dy dx over, we can, or to get this stuff away from our dy dx, we could, we could divide all this over to the other side, but then we just end up with fractions within fractions, which is kind of messy. Instead, we could multiply both sides by two. So that'll cancel the two and the one half. So multiply this side by two, giving us y to the negative one half dy dx equals negative two x to the negative one half. And then to cancel out y to the negative one half, we can actually multiply this by y to the positive one half. The reason why this cancels out is because if you multiply two things with the same base, so in this case, y is the base, you would add their powers. One half plus negative one half gives you zero. Anything to the zero is just one. So we would just basically make this into one times dy dx, which is just dy dx. And again, we have to multiply both sides by that thing. Whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other side, leaving us with this, but we can do more to simplify this. We don't wanna leave it in this form because we have this x to the negative one half. Having something to a negative power, you can make the power positive by flipping it into the denominator. Or if the negative power is in the denominator, you can make it positive by bringing it up to the numerator. So this would be the same as negative two. Our y to the one half will stay on the numerator and then we wanna put our x to the one half on the denominator. And then if we wanted to, we could even rewrite these one half powers as square roots. Since we've already taken the derivative, we don't really need to leave it like this. So we get dy dx equals negative two times the square root of y over the square root of x. And with these solving for dy dx problems, it's not that uncommon that you get y's and x's in your solution, and that's completely fine. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please be sure to hit that thumbs up button down below. Subscribe as well and hit that bell icon so you're notified of all my videos. Like I said, if we hit 10 likes on this video within a week, I'll make a bonus video for you guys next week. So be sure to hit that like button. And if you wanna learn more about implicit differentiation, go ahead and click on one of those videos over there. Thanks and see you next time.